Hi everyone, it's Christina with Bubblegum Paper and I am here with an interactive card to share with you. Lights, cards, action, you heard me right. I am using the Chibitronics LED light stickers, also known as circuit stickers, inside my card today. And this is a very special Mother's Day card. So happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there, especially my very own mama and all of my aunts who treat me like a daughter as well. So this is for you, for all of you out there. Happy Mother's Day. Here's a close-up of what the card looks like when it's all lit up. And I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step so you can do this at home too. Trust me, it's not complicated at all. So let's get started. I'm using a ton of Lawn Fawn products for the cards. So I'm using the Chirpy Chirp Chirp stamp set, the Celebration Scripty Sayings, the Flower Border Die. These are all pretty new, I think, this year. Um, I have the stitched hillside borders, which I actually didn't use in the card, but I took them out just in case. And then my favorite, stitched rectangles from Simon Says Stamp and the scalloped rectangle stackables from Lawn Fawn. I'm also using this Let's Polka in a Meadow, I think that's what it's called, um, pattern paper from Lawn Fawn. It's super, super, super cute. I'm actually going to take out these three colors, so a yellow, a pink, and a green, and each of them have different patterns on them. I'm also using the Chibitronics LED circuit stickers. These are little light bulbs attached to a sticker. They are crazy cute and they're tinier than your pinky nail. Um, I'm not going to walk through the entire starter kit in this video because I don't want it to be too long, but I will do a video that walks you through the entire starter kit. For this video, I am just going to show you the light stickers and the copper tape and the battery that I'm going to use. Before we get to the circuit part, I'm going to start with my stamping and Copic coloring as I always do. So I'm just stamping the three chicks, the paint bucket, the paintbrush, and the butterfly on some Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'm using my Copic markers to color everything in. Initially, I colored um, this first chick a little bit too orangey yellow, so I decided to switch it up and go with a brighter yellow. And um, yellow is actually the color family that I'm missing the most out of my Copic. So I was really trying to stretch here. There's like a whole center section of mid-tone yellows that I, I do not own. Anyway, so I'm coloring all three of the chicks in and then I'm going to go ahead and do the paint bucket and the paintbrush. And I'm going to set this to some music and I will be back soon. paint bucket I got a little bit of pink outside the line so I'm using the colorless blender and just pushing that paint right back in. That's the beauty of Copics. Now I'm going to do all the die cutting so I found the coordinating dies and I'm just putting those around the images that I just colored and then I'm going to take the flower border die and I'm cutting it out of the three pieces of pattern paper that I showed earlier. So I'm starting with the yellow and then I'm going to do the pink and lastly the green. Then I'm taking my favorite stitched rectangle and scalloped rectangle dies and I'm going to make a frame that will sit around the scene I'm about to build. Um, so I'm just lining it up and running that through the machine. My card base is a standard A2 horizontal or landscape layout and I'm just scoring that and making sure the frame fits properly. And now I'm taking the frame and just placing all the different elements in so I know approximately what needs to go where and um, I do plan to cut some of the flowers out so we don't need to have all of the flowers showing. And right now I'm just marking off which ones I don't need. I'm also using my pencil to draw some guidelines so I know approximately where I should be stamping the sentiment and all of that. To get the sentiment to line up perfectly, I am using this Fiskars Compact Stamp Press and I'm using Lucky Hybrid Ink from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just lining it up with the edge of that card, matching my pencil guides, and now I can go back and erase those pencil lines. Next, I've taken a piece of white cardstock, and I'm just marking off where the flower edge is. And I'm taking um, the Distress Ink and Tumble Glass, and I'm just inking 
a sky, a very, very light sky background, just around the edge where that flower border is. I went ahead and cut the green flowers that I'm not going to be using, and then I'm going to cut out the flower daisies from the yellow paper and the tulips from the pink paper. I'm using my Zig glue pen. This is a liquid glue, and I'm just gluing down each of the flowers. This is a really quick and easy way to make a colorful flower border without having to color anything yourself. It's just paper piecing different pattern paper. I'm using the Zig glue pen to glue the flowers in place and I'm also using the adhesive tape runner on the back of the hill. I'm using a 1 8 inch hole punch to punch holes through each of these yellow flowers because that's where the lights will shine through. Now the 1 8 inch hole punch is perfectly sized for both the light stickers and surprisingly this die. Um, so it worked out really well. But usually the 1 8 hole punch is perfect for anything you need for Chibitronics. I'm just centering the panel in right now. I want to make sure everything is perfectly centered. And then I'm going to use a pencil and just mark the corners and the um, four holes because that's where I will build my circuit. Now I'm going to build the circuit. So I'm starting with a battery holder, which is simply a piece of cardstock I folded in half and it cradles the battery. Now each of these batteries, this is a standard watch battery. It has a positive side and a negative side. So I'm just gonna write negative and positive so I know exactly where the battery needs to be placed. And I'm going to glue this down with just some regular tape. Um, the four dots you see for the lights and these are what the light stickers look like. They're little triangles and there's a positive and a negative there. So you wanna make sure all the negatives are lined up the same way and all the positives are lined up the same way. That's what will make this circuit work. Now I'm going to take the copper tape and I'm just going to run one line down to the negative side and one line down to the positive side. And I want to make sure everything is safe, facing the same direction. This copper tape is super easy to rip. It's just like washi tape, so you can just rip it with your fingers. One side is super shiny and conductive and the other side is super sticky and will stick to your paper. So as you draw, I like to say draw with tape, but as you're sticking the tape down, you want to keep it as close to those circles as possible because that's exactly where the light bulbs will be placed and you want the copper tape to run along those edges. Um, when I get to the end here, I want the tape to run down to the negative side where the battery holder is. So to do that, I fold away from the direction I want it to go. So I'm folding it towards the top of the screen and then I bring it back down towards the bottom of the screen. Um, that's how you can get the tape to move in the direction you want. I'm now smoothing out the edges at first with my finger and then I'm using a bone folder because that's more professional. Um, but no, it's just better. It keeps it stuck on the paper. I'm just using my pencil now to mark the negative side and the positive side of the circuit to keep everything straight. And I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm just running it along the bottom of the lights. This is the positive piece of tape. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just running it really close to the circuits. I'm, when I get to the end, I'm folding it up towards the screen and then bringing it down around the battery holder. And eventually my end goal is to end up where that plus sign is. And the negative piece, I'm just gonna rip a little bit off because it's a little too close to that positive one. And I'm using my bowling folder to, fold, to push everything down in place. Now there's a little bit of tape in the lower left corner that's positive tape on the negative side of the battery holder. So I'm just gonna cover that with some washi tape. This way if the battery slides, it's not going to touch the positive tape and short the circuit. Now here comes the fun part, I'm putting the lights on. So each of these lights has a negative side, which is the pointy side, and the flat side, which is the wider base of the triangle, and that's the positive side. So I'm just going to hold this in place and I'm testing each one out. As I lay it down, I'm just going to push the battery um, cover down to see if it lights up. And then, I guess I don't do it with each one, but I did it for the first one. So, and I think I do it after the third one. Anyways, I do a really a quick test. And for this last light, I'm going to fold that little corner down. And, um, and now all four light up. I'm just gonna turn the light off so you can see what it looks like it lights up. Yay! I'm going to cradle the battery in place using some foam adhesive so that way it won't roll around. Like the last thing I want is to have the battery get stuck somewhere in the middle of the card. 
And then I'm taking a piece of vellum. I actually want the, um, the flowers to be, I don't want the bright white light to shine through it, so I actually wanted to make a pinkish glow. And, and Chibitronics does sell pink lights, I just didn't have any handy um, for this video. So I thought I would improvise and take a piece of vellum and use my darker Copic marker. I think I'm using RV25 here. And I'm just drawing some, I'm making my own colored vellum basically. And I'm taping it to the back of the flower holes. So then when the light shines through, it has a very, very, very subtle soft pink glow to it. I'm doing the same with that Lone Ranger off to the left. So putting a little piece of vellum there and then I'm placing the entire um, card down to test and make sure everything fits. It looks like the fourth light is slightly off. So I'm just going to shift that one over a little bit um, to make sure everything matches. Because the battery is pretty thick, I'm going to place um, two layers of foam adhesive around the entire edge of this card base. I'm using the 3M Scotch foam adhesive. It's pretty thin, so if you have a thicker one, you may only need one layer, but if you're using this one, you would want two layers. That way the battery is fully snug right in its place. I'm just going to rip all of that off and I'm going to carefully lay the card base or the card front on top of that. And then I'm using some adhesive tape runner and I'm carefully placing the scalloped border over and I want the two edge flowers to pop out a little bit from the edge. Now I'm finishing the front of the card so I'm going to use some foam adhesive and prop that first duck down where the flowers are missing and then I'm placing the second duck on top of him and he's reaching for the butterfly. Um, for the little painter, I'm putting him down in the lower right corner and then I'm going to put the paintbrush in his right hand, even though I'm a lefty, and the paint bucket will be the last piece. And there is the finished card. Now you're probably wondering how on earth can you give this card to someone without the battery losing its life. So one thing you can do is take a piece of cardstock. This one is... Um, a little larger than a half inch wide and I wrote the words pull with an arrow on the side and I'm just tucking it in behind the battery. You see the battery there? So I just want to place it behind the battery and the copper tape. I'm sorry this is out of camera but, um, but I'm just sliding it right there between the battery and the copper tape and that will essentially short the circuit um, so it turns the lights off and you can nail it this way. And then when your recipient gets it, they see, oh, what's this? It says pull with an arrow. And they go and they pull it out and it lights up. So that's one quick and easy way. I have a little blinky light going on. I think I just need to push it down a little more. But that is the card. Here's a close-up shot of what the card looks like when it's turned off and then when it's turned on. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very special episode. And if you're interested in more projects like this, please visit my blog at bubblegumpaper.com or you can follow me on social media at bubblegumpaper. Thanks again. Happy Mother's Day and catch you next time. Bye.